that's uh, that's something. The only thing is those hospitals are pretty high priced. Uh, I don't know where they get that price on them, but then I guess it's this insurance that's causing it. They just charge anything they feel like. But that's beside the point. Uh, like I say, I feel real good. Uh, it's a little sore yet. Of course, you can't cut part of the bone and expect it not to be sore <laughs> for at least a couple weeks. Uh, like I told you over the phone that they called last Friday and wanted to know if I could come in Tuesday instead of Thursday. Something about the doctor was going to go away or something, I don't know. Anyways, it was all right with me. I'd have done it last week if they would have done it because it had to be done. Anyways, I'm feeling good, so there's not much more to tell about it. Uh, I was glad to hear that you had a nice trip to the East Coast and that my aunt and uncle feel pretty good. Yeah, I wanted to, uh, I don't know whether your roses should be uncovered or not. If you want them uncovered, just write me a note. It won't hurt them for another week. It, uh, I think it'll be down to freezing tomorrow morning. They're talking about frost again. But uh, it's an earlier spring. I don't know whether it should be off or not. So if you uh, if you want to uh, want me to uncover them, I'll do so. Uh, Peterson had his sale last week sold all his machinery and what he had left. So he's all done farming, I guess. Other than that, I I can't think of anything new around here that everybody will be <clears throat> everybody will be busy pretty soon. <laughs> I guess right soon. <laughs> like I say you don't have to hurry back because We'll have plenty of time this year, that's for sure. At least it looks that way. Of course, you never know until you get done planting how much time you've really had. There'll be a lot of land that's wet yet. The river is very high. It was, uh, it's still uh, Koshkinan all that, uh, all those little cottages and everything up around Lake Koshkinan are all flooded. What do they call it? Black Hawk Island. That's been flooded for over a week now. And the river, well, it was putting there about six inches from going over the wall in Janesville. And it's still only a foot from the top right now. I don't know where the water's coming from. It must be coming out of the north. But it's really high. And uh, <clears throat> we drove up around Lake Koshkin on there yesterday, and it sure flooded all over. That's for sure. Well, like I say, this will be a short tape. It'll probably be the last tape I mail you because, let's see, this will be the 26th. So you'll probably get it the 28th or the 29th. You'll be probably thinking about leaving probably the end of next week, I imagine. I don't know when you're planning on coming back. But if anything important comes, I'll either call you or write you a note. But at this point, I can't see that there's anything disastrous around here. It's a nice spring day. It's chilly this morning. It's just about freezing. But the sun is out. Like I say, I, I should have done this yesterday, I guess. it was. But it was supposed to rain yesterday, and it looked like it would. And it, it, uh, I thought sure it was going to rain last night, but it never rained a drop, which is probably all right. We don't need it yet, that's for sure. Well, 
I hope it's real spring-like weather down there. I'll see you in a few weeks. Bill. I'm in for president. Roy has been asking if you were coming down, and several more have. So I told him I didn't think you would make it this year. They all having a good time, so that's about all there is. I can't think of anything more now, Bill, and I'll take this up to the post office and mail it. I hope you get it before you get to the hospital. I don't know for sure. But if you don't, why, I wish you the best of luck and hope that you come out all right. Dad. Well, I can't uh, think of anything more. I probably won't tape you till <clears throat> all the end of next week unless something urgent comes up. If you get over and see Uncle Clarence and tell him hello and I can't think of my aunt's name <laughs> right now but tell them both hello uh, and have a happy birthday. Don't celebrate too much. Uh, so I'll sign off. We'll talk to you later. Bill. Thompson, to the minister and the several others around there. And of course, if you can influence Alice and a few others there in town to go to the primaries, it won't take long, but it might help Barbara out. There's 13 running on the nomination ticket. Of course, she has to be nominated or she can't even run. John was here yesterday and said that she had a lot going for her in Madison and a lot she'd been up north and there was a lot going for her up there so we have high hopes. We sent a card to Patty this morning and asked her to be sure and go to the polls. Usually the primary doesn't amount to anything. Hope you are well. It was quite a job to get the corn over there, but it's over there. So you're lucky, I guess. <coughs> you have to keep it going all the time in order to get anything done. If you got your <coughs> new parts for your planter and fertilizer and all that stuff bought. They'll be out of sight, I suppose, seed corn this year. But I guess that's the way every year. If it's high priced for corn, it'll be high priced for seed. I don't know anything else now, Bill. <coughs> be glad to see if you can come. Dad. Good evening, Dad and Clara. This is March the 3rd. In view of the sad events that have happened this past week, I guess about all I can give is my sympathy. It is quite a shock to have such a young person pass away. I know it must be hard for both of you and I don't know what your plans are now whether you intend to leave early or not but I doubt very much if I can make it Saturday Tom Goodyear stopped and said he'd be here Tuesday to shingle the barn and put aluminum siding on that cupola of the granary. Well, that was all right. I figured we'd get that out of the way this week and I'd still come down next week. Well, as you know, you've probably read in the paper, <clears throat> it started raining Monday. We've had three days of ice. And it stays right about 30 degrees. Monday night we were out two hours. So far we've been very fortunate. 
everything is still covered with ice and they're talking rain and snow again for tomorrow all the wires and everything got about an inch of ice on it if we ever get a windstorm they'll really go down but so far we've been quite fortunate some of the other companies have been having a hell of a time well, when these were over over here were over out of electricity for 14 hours before they got them going again it's worse in spots than it is it's a kind of a funny thing it just seemed to be kind of I don't know it just picks a spot and it's it's uh, bad the lines down by Wetmore's they were all down this morning the crew's been working 24 hours a day trying to keep things going. They've been doing a pretty good job. But I guess we can't control the weather or other elements that happen to us. We just have to bear with it and do the best we can and try to accept whatever is handed out to us. Betty Shadle fell downstairs Saturday night and cracked her ribs. They were supposed to leave for, he and Holy and their wives were supposed to leave for a Y Sunday, so that put them off a day. They didn't leave till Monday. I, I guess all she did was crack a rib, but that's quite fortunate she didn't do any more. It's pretty easy to get hurt, I guess. But outside of that, as far as I'm concerned, everything's all right. Uh, I would have liked to got down. I might still be able to, I don't know. But we'll just have to wait and see. And, uh, I'll get this tape in the mail tomorrow Tomorrow's Thursday, and when it gets there, <clears throat> why don't you call me collect? And by that time, I should know where I stand. Uh, but if you plan on leaving earlier, it don't make any difference to me. Don't let me disrupt any of your plans. I know you want to go to Kansas, and then you want to come up to Iowa and, and uh, probably see Pat and her husband and Leonard and Doris, which is no more than right. So we'll just leave things hanging as they are now until I hear from you. I thought maybe by this time I would have, you would have mailed a letter, I would have heard something, but I know things are pretty hectic in cases in situations like this. But the first of next week I'll know where I'm at. But I suppose I'll have to stay here until Tom gets through now. <laughs> they brought the shingles already. The shingles are here. <laughs> they brought them Monday morning and <laughs> Everything was covered with ice. I know he wouldn't be shingling. I don't know how long this is going to last. According to the weather map, it's, there's, there's nothing going to be any better this week, period. Uh, they got 80% chance of rain for tomorrow, then snow. So I guess we're really catching it for the last two weeks of February. But it's better I get it this time of year than later on it seems that I all seem to have plenty to do I'm uh, that back shed there it's got a nail I'm going to tear the floor out of it the one with the open door and then put a rolling door up there I got plenty of track and stuff around here It'll be high enough so I can run the tractor in there when the fall, when we have a place to put it. 
And like I said, you're going to have to let me know what to do about your house. I was over there tonight. Everything's all right. It's quite damp in there now. Probably if I don't come down, I probably should get the electricity turned on and the heat turned on the next couple weeks. And Because I think this is the time that it's hard on a house when it starts getting where it's above freezing and it, it uh, gets damp in the house. It, uh, it was awful damp in there tonight. But everything seems to be all right. Uh, the temperature the last three days hasn't varied three degrees. It stays right about 30 degrees all the time. So it don't melt the ice off. Uh, but the house seems to be, I can't see as it makes any difference shutting it off. Maybe that's where all the trouble comes in leaving your house empty is when it's damp. But of course in the winter time it's cold all the time and it's frozen there and there's no moisture. I don't know what was on this tape. I played a little bit of it. There was some music on it. It's one that's been laying up here. And uh, two tapes ago I figured out was uh, I remember I thought your tape recorder was bad it wasn't it was a bad tape so I burnt that one up but uh, I guess we wore it out I got plenty of tapes I got four new ones here I didn't I had one and they had a big sale on they had three for a dollar so I bought three of them so I got four new tapes right now all 60 minutes, <laughs> which is a lot of talk, and I don't think we'd ever fill one of them. Anyways, I I got three extra tapes, and you brought two tapes back with you, and I've never used them. One was a a tape of a sermon of the oh that minister you like so well down there that isn't there anymore. Oh, I can't think of his name. Oh. And then the other one is a uh, tape that you made with Levinson's. Anyways, that's what it says on it. I never played it. Uh, I just left them here. If you want to listen to them when you get back, you can or whatever. We'll do something about those two. Erase them or do something with them. Well, it's getting that time of year again. Uh, those horrible things are coming up on you. So I'll wish you a happy birthday, both of you. <laughs> they seem to move around every year. <laughs> Tell Clara not to feel bad. I, I seem to get tired out at noon, too, for some reason. <laughs> and I'm not 80, either. <laughs> Maybe we could both go to the same psychiatrist. Maybe that's the trouble. I don't know. Anyways, your birthday present will be here when you get back for both of you. It'll be a surprise. I'm not going to tell you what it is till you get back. Uh, this will probably be the last tape that I send you. Today is the third. You won't get it till the eighth. And if you're leaving the Last week of March, maybe sooner now, I don't know. Uh, there won't be much more time left. But, like I say, we'll see what happens. You probably, I doubt if you get this tape this week, 4th, 5th, 6th, it takes four days for your mail to come back here and I assume it takes four days for mine to get down there you never said but anyway some evening just call me collect and excuse me I'm yawning when uh, this tape gets down there maybe things will be a little brighter then 
but I guess we can't complain. We've the last few years we've enjoyed a quite a fruitful life. Well, I'll sign off for the now, and if I think of anything more before in the morning, I'll put it on the tape and send it along. But, uh, I'll get this in the mail in the morning. Uh, take care of yourself. Don't hurry back. I mean, it'd be nice to have you back, but what I mean is don't overdo the driving. Take your time. Because I'm quite sure we won't be doing anything in the field for a while, although there's no frost left in the ground. And it's still the same like I said on the last tape. You, you can't get off the hard surface or you're stuck. And we're going to have six weeks of mud, like I said. And, uh, of course, we get snow and it turns cold, then the snow protects it so it don't freeze, but that's good too. Well, good night to both of you, and I'll hear from you later. Bill. This is uh, Thursday morning, March the 4th. Well, <laughs> the weatherman had to be perfectly right. We got light drizzle this morning, freezing. It's going to add to our more problems. I don't know how long the how much more our lines are going to take. I'm hoping it'll warm up enough today so it'll melt the stuff off. It's sure raising cane with all the trees, but there's not much you can do about it. Well, I'll get this wound back and, and uh, get it in the mail. <laughs>